A's, White Sox hoping to improve playoff positioning. August 1, 2021, Chicago, Illinois, USA, Chicago White Sox starting pitcher Jimmy Lambert, 58, delivers a pitch against the Cleveland Indians during the first inning at guaranteed rate field. Kamil Krzyzewski USA Today Sports September 7, 2021, 51 minutes and 49 seconds GMT plus 00 00, the Chicago White Sox could play a role in determining a future playoff opponent when they kick off an important six-game sequence with the opener of a three-game series against the host Oakland. Athletics on Tuesday night Chicago, 79-58 begins its week well in command of the American League Central, but also well behind the Tampa Bay Rays, 87-51, in the battle for top record in the league. If they go on to win the Central, the White Sox likely would open the playoffs against the AL West winner, and at this point that could be any of three teams. Coming off three straight losses at Toronto, the A's, 74-63, will take the field Tuesday as the third-place team in the West, chasing the Houston Astros and Seattle Mariners. Oakland also is involved in a tight wild-card race, where they find themselves chasing the Boston Red Sox, who will visit the White Sox on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The last time the White Sox visited Oakland, a 2-1 series win by the A's vaulted them into the second round of the AL playoffs last October while ending Chicago's season. The A's had gotten into the 2020 playoffs as the AL West champions, while the White Sox were a wild card entrant. The clubs met in a rematch last month in Chicago, with the White Sox taking three straight before losing 5-4 in the series finale. The opener of the Oakland portion of the season series is expected to be a matchup of rookie right-handers. James Caprillion, 7-4, 3.87 era, has been announced as the Oakland starter, while Jimmy Lambert, 0-1, 9.00, was promoted from AAA on Monday and likely will be the guy who replaces injured Lucas Giolito for Chicago. The California natives have never squared off at the major league level and have yet to face Tuesday's opponent in their careers. Caprillion is unbeaten in his last five starts, going 2-0 with three no decisions, with the A's having lost his last two times out. He allowed 10 runs in nine innings against the New York Yankees and Detroit Tigers in those starts. The 27-year-old will be trying to put a patch on an Oakland pitching staff that's been leaking oil. The A's allowed a total of 43 runs in the final five games of their just-completed 2-4 trip. I think the best part of our season is yet to come. I really do, A's manager Bob Melvin boasted after Sunday's 8-0. Drubbing by the Blue Jays. I think we're going to get home and play our best stretch of baseball. I think we're going to get on a run before the season's over. Lambert, meanwhile, has bounced back and forth from AAA Charlotte to the majors three times already this season. He's gone 3-3 with a 4.98 era in 18 starts in the minors. The 26-year-old last pitched for the White Sox on August 1st, when he held the Cleveland Indians to one run and two hits in the first three innings of a 2-1 win. With a healthy lead atop the Central, White Sox manager Tony La Russa had other things on his mind on the off-day Monday. He pleaded with Major League Baseball to change an error given to Kansas City Royals second baseman Whit Merrifield in Sunday's 6-0 loss to a hit, which would give Yon Moncada a career-best 18-game hitting streak entering the Oakland series. He hit the ball sharply and it handcuffed the infielder. That's a base hit, he insisted Sunday. Merrifield is a talented infielder, tried to get a glove on it and got handcuffed. It's a base hit. Field level media. Our standards, the Thomson Reuters trust principles. 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 Pele recovering in hospital following removal of two more. 
Brazilian soccer legend Pelé is seen in Paris, April 2, 2019. Picture taken April 2, 2019. Reuters slash Christian Hartmann slash file photo. Sao Paulo, Sep 6, Reuters, Brazil soccer great Pelé said on Monday that he was recovering in hospital from surgery to remove a tumor from his colon. Pelé, the only player to win three World Cups, did not say whether the tumor was malignant but the 80-year-old former Santos and New York Cosmos player said he was feeling good. Last Saturday I underwent surgery to remove a suspicious lesion in the right colon, he wrote in a social media post. The tumor was identified during the tests I mentioned last week. The Albert Einstein Hospital in Sao Paulo said in a statement that they were keeping Pele in intensive care but expected to transfer him to a room on Tuesday. The tumor has been sent for tests, it added. Luckily, I am used to celebrating big victories with you, Pele wrote. I am facing up to this match with a smile on my face, a lot of optimism and happiness for being surrounded by the love of my family and friends. The news came just hours after a Brazilian news outlet said Pele had spent six days in hospital after going in for his annual medical. It also came days after Pele refuted reports he had fainted and 18 months after his son Adinho said his father was depressed, something the star quickly denied. Pele was famous as a player for rarely getting injured but he has suffered from hip problems for years and cannot walk unaided. His public appearances were already being cut before the COVID-19 pandemic and since then he has made few unnecessary forays outside his house near Santos. Reporting by Andrew Downey and Leonardo Benissato, editing by Ed Osmond and Ken Ferris. Our standards, the Thomson Reuters Trust Principles. Trust Principles. Trust. Britain's star Radu Kanu takes confident step into the spotlight. September 6, 2021, Flushing, New York, USA. Emma Radu Kanu of the United Kingdom hits to Shelby Rogers of the USA on day 8 of the 2021 US Open Tennis Tournament at USTA Billie Jean King National Tennis Center. Robert Deutsch USA Today Sports New York, Sept 6, Reuters, her US Open journey isn't over but Emma Radu Kanu has already written herself into the history books, reaching her first Grand Slam quarterfinal to take up the mantle of British tennis. With Grand Dame Virginia Wade looking on from the stands, the 18-year-old thrashed American Shelby Rogers 6-2 6-1 inside the famed Arthur Ashe Stadium on Monday. Becoming the youngest British woman in the open era to reach the final eight at Flushing Meadows. She did it the hard way, packing in a grueling competitive swing through the United States that included stops in San Jose and Chicago before arriving in New York where she put in an extra week's worth of work in qualifying rounds. Competing in only her second Grand Slam draw, her score leans have been remarkable by any standard, she has yet to drop a set and has only lost 15 games across four matches. Two months after she reached the Wimbledon fourth round, rocketing to stardom. Her performance has captivated the New York spectators, who couldn't help but cheer her on even against their fellow American Rogers on Monday. I was really grateful to have actually received quite a lot of support out there on Ash, playing an American. I could hear a lot of chants, like people saying, come on, Emma, and my name, she told reporters. That meant a lot to me to have received that amount of support out on Ash. She's only the third qualifier to reach the women's quarterfinals at Flushing Meadows in the open era, after she was forced to retire at Wimbledon in the fourth round due to breathing difficulties. Read more The saga at the All England Tennis Club saw British sports personalities including Andy Murray leap to her defense after some suggested she couldn't handle the pressure, and Radu Kanu said Monday she long admired the three-time Grand Slam winner. Read more Andy is such an inspirational person to look up. The amount that he's achieved, the amount he can do with his racket and skill. To have him like sometimes believe in me, support me, 
I think it means a lot to have had someone like that, she said. Also today had Virginia Wade in the front row. I saw her, spoke to her a little bit after the match. It was just really cool to be able to speak to such legends, get their tips on a couple things. She's kept in touch with her friends back home since leaving school this summer and embarking on the more than six-week-long journey, after parting ways with prominent coach Nigel Sears after Wimbledon in favor of her youth coach Andrew Richardson. I've known Andrew since I was nine years old, she said in an ESPN interview. It gives me that sense of reassurance. The partnership appears to be working as Radu Kanu has proven lethal from the baseline and the net. She will need that agility to advance past Olympic champion Belinda Bensik, the 12th-ranked Swiss who is competing in her third U.S. Open quarterfinal. She has a lot of experience on the tour. She's in great form, said Radu Kanu. I'm also feeling good about my game, also confident with the amount of matches I played. I feel like I'm building with each one. Reporting by Amy Tenery in New York, editing by Stephen Coates. Our standards, the Thomson Reuters Trust Principles. 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 Team Europe beat US 15-13 to retain Solheim Cup. September 6, 2021, Toledo, Ohio, USA, Leona Maguire of Team Europe hits her tee shot on the second hole during competition rounds of the Solheim Cup golf tournament at Inverness Club. Aaron Doster USA Today Sports. Toledo, Ohio, SEP 6, Reuters, Matilda Castor and sank a final hole put to ensure Team Europe retained the Solheim Cup before they went on to edge the United States 15-13 at the Inverness Club on Monday and win. For only the second time on American soil. The Finn steered in a right-to-left PAR putt on the 18th to edge Lizette Salas as Europe kept hold of the trophy with three matches to complete before a half point for Dane Emily Peterson secured victory eight years after they last won on U.S. soil. Europe started the day 9-7 ahead and sped to within touching distance of retaining the trophy before the Americans attempted a late comeback before faltering as the pressure mounted. In the end, both teams won five singles with the other two halved. Peterson sank a birdie on the 18th with the last stroke of a gripping day's golf as Europe triumphed but celebrations were already underway after Castoran finished one up over Salas. It was an amazing team effort after we got off to a great start this morning, said Team Europe captain Catriona Matthew. We knew it would be so tough with no European fans. I'm just so proud and happy for them. Rookie Leona Maguire beat Jennifer Cupcho 5 and 4 to pick up the first point of the final day and extend Europe's overnight lead as she became the third player in Solheim Cup history to earn her team four or more points in a single competition. It was quickly followed by Madeleine Sagstrom bagging another point with a 3-2 and two win over Ally Ewing and then Celine Boutier completing a resounding 5-4 and four victory over Mina Haragai in a blemish-free performance. The much-anticipated contest between Anna Nordvist and Lexi Thompson, who were the first singles pairing to tee off on the final day, was halved after 18 holes to take Europe even closer, but then began the U.S. fight back. The first full point of the day for the Americans came from World No. 1 Nelly Korda, who beat Georgia Hall on the last hole at the end of a close contest that finally gave the partisan crowd reason to cheer. Home momentum faltered as Austin Ernst missed a short birdie putt on the last and halved with Nana Coerst's Madsen but then Megan Kang and Brittany Altomari revived American hopes to reduce Europe's lead to 13-11. Kang, who was six up at one stage, completed a 3-2 and two win over Sofia Popov while Altomari ended Carlotta Saganda's unbeaten singles record in the Solheim Cup with a 2-1 and one victory. But Salas faltered on the last to allow Kastorin to spark European celebrations and, while the Americans won two of the last three matches, Peterson's lead over Danielle Kong was big enough to survive a late mini-collapse and ensure Cup success. Reporting by Dhruv Manjal in Bengaluru and Mark Gleason in Cape Town, 
Editing by Parita Sarkar and Ken Ferris. Our standards, the Thomson Reuters Trust Principles. 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 Tennis Harris wins battle of big servers to reach U.S. Open quarters. September 6, 2021, Flushing, New York, USA, Lloyd Harris of South Africa hits a backhand against Riley Opelka of the United States, not pictured, on day 8 of the 2021 U.S. Open Tennis Tournament at USTA Billie Jean King National Tennis Center. Jeff Burke USA Today Sports New York, Sept 6 Reuters, unseated South African Lloyd Harris stormed into his first Grand Slam quarterfinal with a crushing 6-7, 6, 6-4, 6-1, 6, 6-3 victory over American Riley Opelka on Monday. The 24-year-old Harris, whose previous best performance at a major was his run to the third round of the Australian Open earlier this year, will next face fourth seed Alexander Zverev for a place in the semi-finals. Harris, who dispatched seventh seed Denis Shapovalov in straight sets in the previous round, won an incredible 92% of his first serve points, smashing 36 aces and 62 winners to seize the initiative against Opelka. It was a really tough match, Harris said. Riley is always going to come with a lot of big serves, that's for sure. I think I handled it well. I held my composure. I served really well throughout the match. All in all, I'm just very, very pleased and very relieved after that performance. Harris had the best of the early exchanges, but neither player was able to gain a clear advantage until the South African pounced midway through the opening set to break Opelka's booming serve and take a 5-4 lead. Opelka broke straight back and held his nerve in the ensuing tiebreak to go 1-0 up in the match, but that was as good as it got for the 22nd seed. The second set stayed on serve until the very last game, with Harris getting the crucial break to level the match, before turning up the heat and pulling away from his opponent in the final two sets. He broke Opelka six times in the match, while only losing his own serve once, keeping things tidy with just 16 unforced errors to close out the best result of his career. The 6-foot-11-inch Opelka packs one of the most powerful serves on the men's tour, but struggled to bring his most potent weapon to bear on the contest, landing only 65% of his first serves, though he still managed 24 aces. I don't think I served my best. I actually served poorly, to be honest, Opelka said. He served great. He was the better server. It was an uncharacteristic serving day for me. That changed the whole thing. I mean, even if it was a characteristic serving day, I wasn't going to break him much. He was serving unbelievable. This story corrects to remove reference to Opelka as last American in draw in paragraph 7. Reporting by Simon Jennings in Bengaluru, editing by Parita Sarkar. Our standards, the Thomson Reuters Trust Principles Economical Zverev Rolls into U.S. Open Quarters September 6, 2021, Flushing, New York, USA, Alexander Zverev of Germany hits to Janik Sinner of Italy on day 8 of the 2021 U.S. Open Tennis Tournament at USTA Billie Jean King National Tennis Center. Robert Deutsch USA Today Sports New York, Sept 6, Reuters, Alexander Zverev eased past Janik Sinner 6-4-6-4-7-6, 7, and into the quarterfinals of the US Open on Monday as the fourth-seeded German extended his winning run to 15 matches. Enjoying a summer to remember, Zverev might have difficulty recalling the last time he lost a match after tapping into a run of form that has carried him to Olympic gold in Tokyo. A Masters 1000 win in Cincinnati and the last eight at Flushing Meadows. The last time Zverev tasted defeat was in the fourth round at Wimbledon to Canadian Felix Augureliasame and he has not looked in danger at the US Open, 
rolling into the quarterfinals with the loss of one set. I'm happy where I am, I'm happy with how things are, and I'm happy with how things were the last few months, said Zverev, who credits an improved serve as one of the big reasons behind his winning streak. In Tokyo, all of a sudden it, his serve, clicked, because in Wimbledon I had a very bad serving match against Felix. That was the reason I lost. Since Tokyo it's been a lot better, but it can still be a lot better. It was another economical performance against 13th seeded Sinner as Zverev broke the Italian once in each set while blasting 17 aces, including two in the tiebreak to keep the contest from a fourth set on a humid day at Arthur Ashe Stadium. For two sets Sinner could not break down the Germans' defense and failed to convert a handful of break chances. He got his only break to level the third set at 4-4 but made no further dent in Zverev's game, losing the tiebreak and the match. He served well, said Sinner. It's not easy playing against him. He, has confidence. You know, when someone is serving well, the return game you can try a little bit. I think he fully deserved to win today. Reporting by Steve Keating, editing by Ken Ferris. Our standards, the Thomson Reuters Trust Principles. FIFA chief says Brazil game abandonment was crazy. Soccer football, World Cup, South American qualifiers, Brazil v Argentina, Arena Corinthians, Sao Paulo, Brazil, September 5, 2021 Brazil's Neymar in action with Argentina's Emiliano Martinez before play was interrupted Reuters slash Amanda Perobelli. Manchester, England, Sept 6, Reuters, FIFA is investigating the abandonment of the Brazil-Argentina World Cup qualifier with its president Johnny Infantino labeling the events crazy. While Tottenham Hotspur are reportedly ready to take disciplinary action against their Argentine players. Read more. Brazilian health authorities intervened on Sunday after accusing four Argentine Premier League players of violating the country's COVID-19 quarantine rules. Aston Villa goalkeeper Emiliano Martinez and Spurs duo Cristian Romero and Giovanni Lo Celso were on the Neoquimica Arena pitch as part of Argentina's team when officials from Brazil's health. Regulator and Visa walked onto the field and stopped the game around five minutes after kickoff. Read more. Aston Villa midfielder Emiliano Buendia had also travelled from the UK and was in the stands. Anvisa said Brazilian rules make clear that travellers who have been in the UK, South Africa, or India during the previous 14 days are forbidden from entering the country unless they are Brazilian citizens or have permanent residency. It said Argentine players had made false statements about their previous whereabouts on immigration forms. Brazil's federal police said on Monday they had opened a formal inquiry into the actions of the Argentine players who, a spokesperson said, were deported. We can confirm an investigation has begun into the possible crime of supplying false information, a spokesperson said. Yesterday, the players were notified they must leave the country, which is the regular procedure, and statements from them were taken. The Argentina squad left Brazil together on Sunday night and flew back to Buenos Aires. FIFA said it had received reports from match officials. The information will be analyzed by the competent disciplinary bodies and a decision will be taken in due course, World Soccer's governing body said in a statement. Difficult situation. Infantino, in a video addressed to the European Club Association's General Assembly, said the situation was a reminder of the difficulties faced during the pandemic. We saw what happened with the game between Brazil and Argentina, two of South America's most glorious teams, Infantino said. Some officials, police, security officials entered the pitch after a few minutes of the game to take away some players, it is crazy but we need to deal with these challenges, these issues which come on top of the COVID crisis. Alejandro Martinez, brother of Emiliano, said the players were due to fly from Argentina to Croatia, 
which is a UK greenlist country, later on Monday to avoid the 10-day mandatory hotel quarantine on return to the UK from a red list country. They will travel to Croatia to do their quarantine there and then go to England, Alejandro told radio station La Oral Deportiva. That was the condition set by Aston Villa. The Argentine Football Association, AFA, said Martinez and Buendia had been released from the national team, meaning they will not take part in Thursday's qualifier at home to Bolivia. The AFA later released Spurs Pierre Lo Celso and Romero, saying they are out of the game against Bolivia and can return to their club. The website Football.London said the Spurs pair could expect club fines on their return to England having made the trip without the permission of their club. Villa and Tottenham declined to comment. Reporting by Simon Evans, additional reporting by Andrew Downey, editing by Christian Radnage slash Ed Osman slash Christian Radnage. Our standards, the Thomson Reuters Trust Principles. 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 Principles.